Hey everybody, welcome back to This Is The Police. Day number three. What's going on in the papers? Legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freiburg. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date and construction of cinema museum postponed again. Motherfucker. So I That car will start first one day. Surely, surely. So, asking for a day off. Um, when a police officer is too tired to be effective, he will ask for the day off. Sometimes officers will request days off, even when they're at full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates, uh, but don't antagonise them either. Remember that everyone's got uh, secrets, and you've got to make sure these guys have your back, indeed. Birch didn't come in. Birch, come on now, big boy! My father's funeral is today. Can you leave me so I can go to the... Well, well, fucking... Yes, but come tomorrow. Grant as well! Grant, come on now. I was up all night reading an exciting detective story called The Last Temptation of Neptune, but I didn't have time to get to the ending. I'm almost certain the killer is Mrs. Clemens, but I can't rest until I know for sure. Can I go home and um, finish reading the book? Not a fucking chance! <laughs> can I go home and read a book? Get out in the streets and bust some asses, man! Go and hit someone with a nightstick or something. Fucking do what police do. Go and shoot someone. In addition to the performance ratings, uh, police officers also possess rank. Um, employees begin at the lowest rank, and you can be elevated in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Once a week, uh, you can pass out stripes and improve the rank of an employee. Um, if you think that no one is worthy of the honour, some weeks you can postpone the ceremony until later. Insignias won't go out until your people are ready. Oh, fucking... Why is Birch getting a stripe? Because he's going to his dad's funeral? Employees of rank uh, not only increase in professionalism, but also learn to command. Whenever a ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. Sometimes when a cop gets rank, they start thinking more seriously about their service. Hmm. Well, maybe that is a good thing then. Um, this can mean less drinking and more time spent on the job. Some of them might even turn out to be dependable. Wait, hold on, wait! Didn't Birch say he was going to his dad's funeral? Or was it Roy? I have no idea. Someone was going to a funeral. So, uh, stripes. No. Start the day. Let's start the day. Fucking, let's get it going. Music turntable. I know what a turntable is. Uh, Freeburg isn't one of those cities where you can listen to uh, what they say or nothing at all. Um, wait, what? Freeburg isn't one of those cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any song from your collection and play at any time, just like in real life. Well, the life of your grandfather. Well, I've got a fucking turntable sitting like a foot to my left game. Don't tell me how to live my life. I like records. I I, I buy vinyl. Choose a song to play. So we, we can go with the fucking snotty gonads. We can go with uh, Picasso. We can go with uh, Picasso number two or three. Or we can go with a bit of Chopin. Chopin. Chopin fucking... Uh, which one looks the most jazzy? That that's a that's a 1950s jazz cover. That is, if I ever was to say so. Singing them, John Sangster. It's not a jazz album at all, but it could be. Um, oh, so I can actually view them here. Don't you leave me here. Oh, it's the jazz band. That's the one we want. It's a red vinyl as well, limited edition. Oh, now we're talking, boys. All right, now I'm happy. We got a bit of jazz. Um, let's learn how to hire and fire cops. Let's let's learn that. Let's do it. I hope to God these songs aren't part of the um, <laughs> content ID system. That would suck for me. Affairs. Um, police station. So we go to the labour market. Um, you have a certain number of paid uh, job openings for which you can hire any available applicant. Job slots are separated between officers and detectives. Indeed. So we're going to hire Crystal McCoy um, for Shift A, because obviously Shift A is the one that we're missing someone, isn't it? Because um, we started Shift B, I'm pretty sure. So we'll hire for Shift A. So professionalism 470, you are exactly the kind of police I need. One free up slot, time to fire somebody. I'm sorry, Roy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roy. But you suck. You suck. Take your retirement package and fuck off out my door. I don't want to see you again in my... I don't want to see you in my precinct ever again. In fact, the next time I see you, I hope it's your funeral. I shouldn't say that. It's quite mean. Um, if you have legal grounds for uh, the termination, no one will ask any questions. You might uh, need to fire them anyway. Legality be damned. 
but that could land you in some additional proceedings and your other staff will become more worried about keeping their job than they are about um, actually doing their jobs. Fair enough. Another way to free up slots is to have police officer killed, but that's not really a valid option, right? Well, it could be, it could be, but I don't think we will. Um, too old, is that really a legal reason? I guess, I, I mean, can't I fire you because you're shit? Like, isn't that a ground for firing? Like, your performance at work is just fucking subpar? You've got subpar perf- Roy, look, I'm sorry to bring you in like this, but it's come to my attention that you're shit and that you're bringing the whole fucking precinct down. I'll look at the professionalism across the board, you see. And Roy, you're sitting at a five. Stovall is the same age as you. The old man's got a 400 professionalism. You fucking suck. You're fired. Fuck off. Okay, now that we've got that off our chest, let's, uh, let's proceed. I think we're fine. So let the day begin. So we got a St. John's Cathedral call. Vandalism in the fucking cathedral? Who dare do such a thing? We received a frightening call from the local uh, cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have uh, been broken into pieces. It's bad. It's not good. It's not good. It seems that there's even marks uh, from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Hmm. Well, this one doesn't really require that much... I think we'll just send fucking Rob Van Dahl and uh, Gandhi in. I suppose they'll they'll handle it. They'll know what to do. They'll know what to do. It's a potato call anyway. It's not really something we need to worry too much about. We're, we're really lacking people today. It feels. Oh, so I can click on the station and look at. Oh, I can do this at any time. Indeed. Um, so we got a call from Atticus Tower. Vandalism in the Atticus Tower again. Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. <sighs> so. I, I assume the Atticus Tower is somewhere kind of fancy. Um, I'm going to send uh, Baskin Robbins and Hugh Grant. And I, I don't need to send a third person. Fuck that. I'm going to save Stovall and Birchall for a later date, I suppose. Look, and if he's salty about... The, wait, can I hire someone else, actually? Hmm. <laughs> Detective? Um... So let's just look at our person. Oh, no, we are on shift A. Yeah, oh, that was right. Aye, aye, aye. It was right. It was right. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, oh, so Birch... Or, so it was Birch's dad died, and then Birch Jr. doesn't want to go to his grandfather's funeral? There must have been some sort of family feud type situation. Also, didn't I hire someone else? Didn't someone else get hired? Did I put them in the wrong shift? I probably put them in the wrong shift, didn't I? Or maybe Crystal McCoy just hasn't come in for our fucking meeting yet. We should be fine. We've got enough people. We'll be alright. So let's hope that we got, you know, what we needed. So everyone's getting to their call. Go on, lads. Get it done. Sitting here in the office just dealing with things. So, okay, the vandalism report. Let's fucking see. What did we get? Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Jobs are fucking good. And Rob Van Dahl and Gandhi doing the fucking job. That's what I want to see, boys. Okay. Eddie's Burgers. This could be a tough one. Suspicious individual. A waitress named uh, Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who she's, uh, she'd seen on the television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger at Stovall. This is a job for Stovall and Birch. Now, Birch, I know your grandfather died, and I know you're not okay with this. You came into work anyway. I, I, I appreciate it. Just don't fuck up the job. So hopefully we get some... Uh, yeah, Robin, Robin and Gandhi are coming back soon. So vandalism report. Offender escaped. Officers unharmed. Come on, boys. Come on, lads. It's not what I want to see. It's not what I want to see at all. It's all right, though. It's all right, though, because we're, we're, you know, we're living the dream. Doing well. We're in the late afternoon. I hear, I hear things going on. Suspicious individual. Mistaken, um... Retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. False alarm. Waste of fucking police hours. The King Lewis nightclub. Mr. Boyd, my bouncer, stuffed himself with Mexican food again and now he can't get off the can. Meantime, the line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need someone outside who can tell uh, the cool guys from the punks. How is this police work? This is a waste of fucking time. Oh, Rob, go and deal with this, man. I mean... No... 
It's not police work though. It's not. It's not like so. In my head, I'm thinking the game's probably gonna fuck me if I say no. But I really shouldn't send someone because how is this in any way, shape, or form police work? Fuck off. Should I send someone? Grant, go and deal with this. Go and learn it. Go and earn a bit of professionalism for fuck's sake. Earn your keep. All right. Well, we've got the full sweep back. It's a slow day in the office, but you know we're doing things. We're doing stuff. We're living the dream. Oh, we've got a drug sale, so no! Okay, Stovall, this is one for you. Um, an anonymous call just came in. Uh, a clown carrying balloons at the skating rink um, is selling crack to teenagers. Right, this is one for Stovall. And we'll send uh, Birchall with him just so we can learn a little from the from the old man. Old man fucking old man police. Let's get it done. Apprehend this fucking clown bastard. Please don't be a bad one. Suicide threat. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline is threatened to set himself on fire unless his favourite chewing gum becomes popular again. I don't think this is a police... This is a job for, you know... Right, we'll send in... The, the, the duo, the dream team, the fucking partners in crime. The, the partners fighting crime, I should say. You know, it's a suicide threat. You have to go and you have to check it out. These are important things. These are important... Oh, wait, let's have a look here. Um, sorry, Chief, but I quit. Um, and one night I pulled in more cash than I earned in a month. Ah, oh, I knew this would be bad. I knew the game would fuck me. Uh, Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I just wasn't cut out. Grant, it's all right. You sucked anyway. Um, thanks for your help, Mr. Boyd. So I get paid money for that? Hey, I'm actually kind of okay with that. Um, drug sales. Uh, as police arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for kids. Take the clown onto the ice and round up any witnesses. That's a recipe for disaster. Cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be an illicit customer. Carefully watch the clown from the stands. Uh, so if I was police, what would I do? What would be the right thing to do? So, cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be an illicit customer? These guys aren't detectives. Like, they're, they're police. That's not a job for them. Carefully watch the clown from the stands. I think we should probably just go and ask questions, you know, we, we received a report. Someone's gonna fall over and die though, probably. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Oh, we live in the dream. Live in the dream. Doing, doing police. Doing police work. Let's see, how do we do? Offender caught, officer unharmed. Jobs are good. Well played, boys. Well played. And I guess we can just end the day there. Not bad. A good day of work. We earned some money. You know, we've we done some things. Um, let's have a look here at shift B tomorrow. How are we? How are we looking? Um, you're getting fired tomorrow. <laughs> Unfortunately, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a shame we don't have the eighth uh, to send out, but that that could be okay. We've still got the three detectives. Is there anyone I could drag over from here to do an extra day? Hmm. We're gonna have to. Oh yeah. So Crystal's gonna be coming into shift A for the next time around. Shift B should be fine. We're kind of stacked in shift B. We've got like three extra personnel. We should be fine. We'll, we'll work it out. I think we'll try and employ someone else for shift A. Just to kind of work it out. So let's see what's going on day four. How have we got? Feminist organization denied official registration. Enemies using feminists to destroy Freeburg. Um, Robespierre to reveal his identity when the time is right. Robespierre? Robespierre? Robespierre is a superhero, maybe? I'm not sure. Let's go to work. First try. Nope, no car. Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? <laughs> To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. 
shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, um, Price, come on now. My friend just crashed into someone's car at an intersection and she's in a terrible panic. Can I go help her out? Aren't you getting fired? Or was that Roy? Um, uh, my friend just crashed into someone's car at an intersection and she's in a terrible panic. Can I go help? Yeah, we're coming tomorrow. Go on then. Go on then, Price. Um, we can hand out... So, how, how do we do the stripes business? Ah, we just carry it across. Um, do I want to give Coachy the new stripes? I think I do. We want some top police in this. I mean, I mean, look at the look, look at the the range of police on Shift B. Shift B is making Shift A look fucking terrible. Let's we'll start the day. Let's uh. So how, how are the it's not going ads? What are they? Sweet ginger green. Right team five. I'm kind of nervous that these songs will content ID, so I'm not going to go with them. Oh, I need to tune. Just go to the map. Fuck it. No music today. I'll just get on with the day's work. First things first. Affairs. Is that counting down? No, oh, shit. Okay, so what we got? We got destruction of property at City Hall. Um, a member of the city's cleaning crew uh, saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot carrying a big iron rod. The whole street could hear him shouting, Bastards, thieves, bloodsuckers. Um, I think we'll send in Purdy and Asano to sort this out. Should be fine. Um, if someone commits a serious crime and flees the scene, the case goes to your detectives. Ooh. We've got an investigation. A homicide in the game. Oh, okay, now we're talking. This is the good stuff. So they, uh, they investigate uh, the crime scene, interview witnesses, and gather information that seems pertinent. One of your detectives will be lead investigator on the case. You can assign additional detectives to any case. Um, 
who will work under the lead investigator as a subordinate. The more professional the lead investigator, the more effective the team is. So, I guess we're going to put Mole in as the the lead detective, and you always want a second one, so Mole and, Mole and Armstrong will send in. Uh, black activist Ronnie Moore was found shot outside his home. Oh, that's a shame. Better fucking catch the motherfuckers. Right, we should really think of employing someone for... Um, Shift A. McCoy, why are you so... Oh, wait, oh, so you're just drained because you've been working somewhere else, I guess, but we employed you, so that's fine. Um, let's have a look at the labour market and see if anyone looks particularly good. We can maybe use another detective on Shift A. Perhaps. I mean, Shift B, rather. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do we need another officer of the law? For shift A. Shift A could use one more person, I think. Probably not a detective, though. Probably just a regular police. Are we thinking of doing that, really? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, but I, I want eight people. I want eight people. So, let's uh, hire for shift A. And then that should cover shift A for the time being. I wonder what the rest of these panels open up into. Anyway, City Hall, let's have a look here. So, um, fire all black cops? A racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. Uh, they're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. Motherfuckers. They recently sent a message to a local radio station promising to kill all the black doctors, firemen, and the police. We don't need any more dead police, especially not mere months before the election. The racists are gaining more and more followers, and even some of our citizens support them. You'll have to fire all your black employees over the next two days due to mounting racial tensions. Not a fucking chance. I stand tall and proud with my fellow man. I ain't firing anyone. It's not gonna happen. Not a chance in hell. I refuse. Got a carjacking in the suburbs. A gas station surveillance camera recorded a car that's on the stolen vehicle list. Right, send in the big boys. Um, Kochi. Subaki. I don't think we need any additional, do we? They're going to be back soon. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to send in a third. And hope that that does exactly what I need. So. Um, oh, the investigation started? Okay, let's have a look here. So, um, investigation, the preliminary work. Detectives have interviewed witnesses, collected evidence from the scene, and are pursuing the investigation. Expect results. Proceed. So, let's have a look here. So, Mr. Graham. Eric Graham, a drunk witness. Uh, they drove by in a sedan, and they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much, Mr. Clayton. I only heard a few muffled shots. Lawrence Carr. Um, he got what he deserved. He was causing trouble for a long time. And recently, there's been a lot of uh, cursing and carrying on. I don't remember the car, and the neighbourhood was quiet. I never heard any shots. The police these days don't do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy some medicine, and was nearly hit by some idiot's car. So, that's him leaving the house, and that's him dead. Doesn't really give me much information. Keep working on it, boys. Keep working on it. Destruction of property. How did we do? Offender cop. Officers unharmed. Jobs are gooden. Exactly what I want to see. Let's have a look at the investigation again. Uh, gangs. We don't have any information about the gangs. Uh, details. Maybe a, an extra detective would be a good idea on this one. It's quite an important case. Should we bring in someone else? Yeah, I want you working double time on it because of the racial tensions going on in the city. I want more people on this. I want, I want it so I want it resolved, boys. I want it resolved, ladies and gentlemen. This is an important matter. This is police work. It's what we need to be done. Desire Park, a suspicious individual. Um, Corey Ramsey, mother of several children, has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocals seated on a bench beside a playground. He's been watching the children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of them. Yeah, you gotta check that shit out. 
So, carjacking. The driver is nowhere to be seen. Search the car and interview potential witnesses. Wait at a safe distance for the driver to appear. Oh, I do not know. So, what would be the best thing to do? I, I guess you would search the car, eh? You would go up and have a swatch. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. I am the best chief of all time. Look, boys, I'm going to bring the city back to the fucking... I'm going to bring the city to the golden ages. It's going to be fine. So, we're going to have people back as well. So, if there's any more calls, we'll be... Uh, we'll be all right. We'll be fine. We'll be able to deal. Suspicious individual... Offender escaped, officer unharmed. I think a second police there would have been just what we needed. The Dragon's Lair Club. Uh, Mr. Boyd, I'm opening Freeburg's first martial arts club and for my first exhibition, I want to hold a sparring match between one of my students uh, takes on your toughest cop. After the fight, I'll teach your man a few tricks, something that will help him out on the streets. Hold on. Coachy gonna kick your ass, boy! Coachy's gonna come in and kick everyone's ass. Coachy, go and fucking teach these boys a lesson. A lesson in respect. I bet Coachy gets a broken arm or something. Homicide. Okay, your detectives present frames, different versions of what might have happened at the crime scene. Let's have a look here. So, um, let's open the investigation and we'll see. Um... They get it wrong half the time, but a good cop can separate facts from fiction. If they know how to look at case material, um, the more professional the detectives working on the uh, investigation, the better their instincts. So, sequence. To get your suspects, you need to figure out the true sequence of events at the crime scene using the frames you think uh, are likely, sometimes with a little guesswork thrown in. If you add it uh, all up, but the sequence fails, you're probably telling the wrong story. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. Right, so, let's have a look here. They drove by in a sedan and um, they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. Right, the muffled shots make sense with the with the, with the the suppressor on the gun. Although, it doesn't really muffle that well. Hmm, who knows. Um, he got what he deserved. Couldn't really care less. Cursing and carrying on. I don't remember the car. The neighborhood was quiet. I never heard any shots. So, yeah, it confirms the... The silencer, the suppressor thing. Uh, I went to buy some medicine. It was nearly hit by some idiot's car. So I guess... So is this the, the sequence of... Um, uh -huh. Maybe. I'm not really sure what we do here, so let's close that and see if that's any, any use to us. Kevin's Throat Bar? A bartender reports that a couple of dancers started fighting over tips and the catfight broke out uh, right onto the stage. We'll send Purdy and we'll send Austin. Why not? Uh, we could probably... Uh, Sano, you can probably learn a little bit from Purdy. So we'll send all three of you in. It's not, uh, you know, an important case, but, you know, get them out in the streets, learn them about, uh, you know, life lessons. The Octopus Restaurant. Well, I want to see what happens with Kochi. No? Um, a fight. A bartender reported that a fight broke out between a patron and the bar's bouncer. The man, apparently drunk, had climbed onto the stage while a singer uh, was performing and tried to sing a duet with her. Alright. Go on then, boys. So let's have a look here. Chief, um, I just about nailed the chap a couple of times, but it was too fast for me and one on points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of uh, points very well. But he was right. Even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away with a little and, pu uh, and pulled my back. I think I can take the day off. Yeah, you're alright. You can take the day off, probably. So, at the end of the day, we got it done. I, I suppose we should wait and see what happens with the remainder of the, the stuff. So, Kevin's throat bar. On the stage, um, there are two strippers going at it. And it's gone beyond arguing to full-on cat fight. The bouncer is fast asleep. Of course he is. Um, clearly too wasted to handle the situation. The drunk patrons are happily watching the fight. Shut off the music and turn up the lights. That could cause a fucking riot. But then again, that's the right thing to do. The strippers continue fighting, oblivious to the police presence. Um, yeah, step on the stage and try and separate them. Fender's caught. Officers unharmed. 
Everyone's learning. Everyone's improving. That's what I like to see. Let's wait for this last call. I want to see what happens. Need to make sure everything is a-okay. With my troops. With my lads. With the team. Yancey and What happened? Someone died? Oh, wait. What? What happened? It looked like someone dropped out. But I think we're fine. I found that everything's fine. Everything's okay. Woo! We can end the day. So, uh... If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, all the usual good stuff, and of course, I will see you next time.